may have encountered terms like vulnerability and exploit in others when hearing about issues in cybersecurity. And what I wanted to do in this video is give you a bit of a lay of the land, if you will, for what these terms mean and what their implications are. Now, if you're already well versed in cybersecurity issues, then probably much of this material will be repetitive, uh, though you might still find something in here that is insightful. Uh, so let me actually just dive right in. So for starters, a vulnerability, and here I have a definition from the National Institute of Standards and Technologies, also known as NIST, uh, and their definition of vulnerability is it's a flaw or a weakness in system security procedures, design, implementation, or internal controls that could be exercised, accidentally triggered, or intentionally exploited, and result in a security breach or a violation of the system's security policy. And that's actually quite a lot. Um, so basically, when security researchers talk about vulnerabilities with regard to a particular system, what they typically mean are security-related weaknesses, okay? Uh, things that can cause security issues to take place or perhaps more broadly can allow or potentially allow attackers to make the system act in a way that perhaps differs from its uh, prescribed or intended functionalities. And in many ways, you can think of it as being able to make the system do something that might violate its security policy. Okay. Now, an exploit, and I've put here a bit more of an informal definition of an exploit right here. An exploit is basically an, a tangible mechanism for taking advantage of a vulnerability. And that tangible mechanism, let me be a bit more explicit, that could include things like uh, commands uh, to the system, it could include things like uh, computer instructions, and uh, those instructions can in fact be uh, packaged as part of maybe a software application. So you can imagine implementing an exploit for a system or a software application with other software. Uh, an exploit might also involve some type of appropriately crafted uh, chunk of data that's uh, sent to the system in question. And actually, in general, it could obviously involve uh, some appropriate combination of all of these things. Okay. Now the term exploit itself, it is a little bit confusing and I think it's confusing because when you hear the term exploit in English, it's normally thought of as a verb. But in the context of security research, at least among people in security community, exploit is viewed as a noun because it's the actual, it's the actual tangible mechanism, the thing that is used for being able to take advantage of a vulnerability. Okay. Now there are different kinds of vulnerabilities and, and some common ones that you uh, may have heard about in the past uh, include things like uh, one of the more popular ones is, is the, something known as a buffer overflow. Okay. Another type of vulnerability is what's called a cross-site scripting vulnerability and that's often abbreviated as XSS and these are uh, two of the most common vulnerabilities. Another common vulnerability, especially in the context of web applications, are uh, SQL injection vulnerabilities, and, and these are terms that you might have heard in the past. These are all different kinds of vulnerabilities, okay? And these last two, cross-site scripting and uh, SQL injections, these are basically seen commonly in web applications. And in this case, what you might typically have is you might, let's say, have uh, a web page that uh, is facing some type of a user, and let's say he's, a, he's an attacker, and what might be happening is on the back end of this web page, there may be a broader system in place that's used to help render that content that's on that web page. So, for example, there may be a database uh, back here, there may be web servers and uh, content management systems, and so on. And the content on this web page is being derived or is really fueled from these back end resources. Now, an attacker might, by interacting with this page in the right way, he'll maybe send some data or text or, or whatnot to this particular page, and that in turn will cause uh, potentially certain commands to be executed by these backend systems. And if it turns out these backend systems do have some type of a security vulnerability and the attacker knows how to exploit that security vulnerability, then he may be able to get these systems to do something that's undesirable, like for example, uh, divulging sensitive user data or uh, displaying content on a web page that's controlled uh, by the attacker and, and so on and so forth. And here I think it's worth pointing out that a given software application might exhibit one or more of these vulnerabilities. It's not like one vulnerability is somehow sacrosanct. And in fact, an application may have 
multiple vulnerabilities of a given type. So for example, there may be multiple, multiple buffer overflow vulnerabilities within a single software application. Okay. Now who actually finds these vulnerabilities? Well, uh, there are a few different cases. So first of all, uh, it's possible that a vulnerability will be found directly by the vendor, uh, the vendor for whom a particular product is associated. So for example, um, you know, if I have a particular product um, and I'm doing some analysis of my own product, I might find the vulnerability myself before anyone else does. Okay. Uh, another possibility, let me actually make that clear, let me write down uh, vendors so you have a sense of who actually finds vulnerabilities. Another possibility for who finds vulnerabilities are security researchers. Uh, and these are people who just maybe have an interest in different uh, products and technologies and we're always kind of poking around and I've done this myself and uh, sometimes in that process you might find a particular security weakness. All right. Now what happens is that uh, if a security researcher finds a vulnerability then, then he or she may decide that uh, they're going to disclose that vulnerability to the vendor and work with the vendor and in this case give the vendor an opportunity to issue what's known as a patch. Okay, a patch. Okay. Now a patch is basically an upgrade to the system and for example it might be a software upgrade that, that and that really that upgrade is really designed to, to shore up the vulnerability so that ideally any future exploit will not succeed if it's trying to run on a patch system. All right. Now the other recourse that a person might have is that a security technology vendor, you know, for example, vendors of intrusion protection systems, they could provide increased protections in their technologies that they sell so that users are protected while they're waiting for a patch to be implemented or, or released. Okay. Now there are cases in which a security researcher might decide to go public with their vulnerability before the vendor has had a chance to patch the system. And in this case, the attacker or any attacker might have an opportunity to develop an exploit before the patch is made available and installed. And of course, it's, it's also entirely possible that an attacker has already figured out that there was a vulnerability before anyone else for that matter. And actually, this, this is an important point. Let me, let me actually elaborate on this. Uh, sometimes an attacker will find a vulnerability, create an exploit for that vulnerability or write exploit code for it, and then release that exploit into the wild and start attacking people with it before anyone even knows that there is a vulnerability that existed there in the first place. Now the security community, because this kind of situation does happen, the security community has a term for it, and that term is known as a, a zero day. Okay, a zero day. Uh, that's because the vulnerability only became public when the exploit became public. So the exploit is is kind of valid on day zero and it works on day zero. Now zero days are typically can be a cause for alarm uh, because they immediately pose a threat to users. You know, even if a user has a system that's fully up to date with the latest security patches, and he or she can still be susceptible to a zero day because uh, the, the a new patch has not yet been made available. Nobody even knew about this particular vulnerability. And they are going to be susceptible until either a new patch is made available to handle the vulnerability or until a security technology vendor provides some extra protection to help deal with that situation. So there is a reasonable window of vulnerability when zero days uh, do become or are out there. So what I'll do is I'm going to stop this video right here. Uh, in the next video, I'll continue talking about vulnerabilities and I'll examine perhaps some criteria for being able to uh, better understand their ramifications.